in today's class we are going to see some representative coding guidelines as in a previous class we have seen about some coding standards and now we will be seeing some coding guidelines right so uh, you can see in the previous video for the coding standards now what are coding guidelines some guidelines which we are going to use some guidelines have been given for the coding phase that those were the standards which which are to be followed now some guidelines are there which are to be followed so that your coding will be very easily understandable and obviously it will be very helpful for the other phase remaining in your sdlc model right now let's see what are the different six coding uh, guidelines right first one is the do not use a coding style that is too clever or difficult to understand what is that one whenever you are going to uh, write a coding a particular code many engineers are there who write like okay i am i am uh, very i know the coding very nicely now i am going to write a code which is very clever to understand or which is very difficult so that the uh, particular person who is going to take the code he will know that i am a very good engineer okay so i know the coding very nicely but here you have not to show off your coding skills you have to write the coding in such a way which will be very easy okay so that if a person who is coming maybe he is not very skilled in that particular coding language maybe he have some basic knowledge or he have some normal knowledge okay but his knowledge level is not too much high he can also understand your coding here you have not to show your coding skills how much i know this coding or how much i am uh, i am very much skilled in this coding that i have not to show, show here here my code should not be very clever or very difficult to understand it should be easy to understand it should be easily understandable to everyone who is going to deal with my code right i don't know that who is going to deal with my code maybe if i am leaving my, uh, this particular uh, coding team some other person is com coming maybe he is not so much skilled for this particular language or he is not so much skilled to uh, he does not have so much knowledge to uh, see or to uh, understand a very high level a uh, skilled coding okay so i have to write a coding in such a way i have to write the code in such a way so that any person who is coming in my place or who, who is getting the code maybe he can understand it very easily right so here do not use coding style that is too clever or difficult to understand here write the coding style in such a way so that every particular person maybe highly skilled or low skilled person can easily understand your code coding should be easy to be understand by all the engineers it will also make the maintenance very easy while we are doing the going for the maintenance phase when your uh, particular software is been hand over to the particular customer whenever the maintenance phase is coming he wants some maintenance from your side at that time also maybe you are highly skilled but at that time when he is uh, needing you maybe at particular instant of time you are not able to understand that code right so the coding should be there are many codes you are writing many codes okay so at that time the person who is dealing with that particular co coding in the maintenance phase it should be so easy that he can easily understand that one it is nice for any engineer who is handling with this particular coding as well as it will be very easy for the maintenance phase also in the testing phase when your coding style is very easy obviously some errors will be less and if errors are less it will be less time consuming for the testing phase also errors will be coming less it will make the whole process very easy and the maintenance phase will also be very easy for this particular when you are going for the uh, maintenance phase it will be very easy when your code is written in a very nice style okay which is easily understandable for everyone so this thing you have to take care do not show your coding skills just think about every person who is dealing with the coding skill this particular code okay so that everyone can understand this one so this is the first thing which we have to keep in mind while writing a particular code the style should be very easy easy and nicely written okay second one is 
avoid obscure side effects. What what are obscure side effects? Suppose I am writing some global variables. I am declaring some global variables. Now I am using that those variables in my program, right? At that instant of time, when I am calling a mod particular module, at that instant of time I am changing the name of the variable. No, this will create some obscure side effects. What are obscure side effects? Suppose when you are writing a particular C program, right? For example, you can when you are uh, seeing the C program, you can see some particular errors which are coming. Some particular errors you can see while you are uh, looking going through the C program. You can see some particular errors which are easily seen. Like you can see some uh, asterisks are missing or maybe a scan f is missing or maybe scan is written f is not written print f is uh, some uh, syntax is wrong there the whole syntax of print f while printing the variables so many things you can easily understand when you are going through the code but some particular errors are there which is not understandable when you are going through the code at runtime or at compile time this error comes so these are creating some obscure side effects. These are called obscure side effects. Obscure side effects is one that is not obviously obvious from a casual examination of the code. When you are going through the code, you cannot get those things. Okay. Whenever you are compiling the particular code or maybe when you are running the particular code, at that time these particular errors are being seen or these er errors are errors occurs. Okay. So, these kind of particular errors give some obscure side effects, right? Like it makes it difficult to understand a piece of code. Again, this kind of error when comes, obviously your output will be changed. Then, obviously your code will be difficult. Now, it is difficult to deal with that one. Where my error is there? Obviously, when we are running a C program, some error comes. This and this error is coming. Then, you have to again go to that line. See what is my error. Sometimes it is seen. Sometimes it is not, we are not able to see what kind of error is there. So this is what, what happening. Some hindrance is created. So this will make your code difficult to understand. If you are a skilled person, you can easily find that one also. But if you are not a skilled, so much a skilled person, it will be very difficult for you to see that code. This will create some obscure side effects. Example, global variables change in a call module. In a call module, your global variable is declared. You are using that thing, but in a call, particular call module, you are changing the name of the variable, name of your global variable. So, this is creating this obscure. So, you have to see that this kind of obscure side effects are not created in your particular code. It's very important. Now, third one is do not use an identifier for multiple purposes. When you are using a particular identifier, do not use a particular and particular identifier for your multiple purposes right like do not use the same identifier to denote several temporary entities if you are using a particular identifier so so many multiple users again your code will be difficult to understand why each variable should be given a descriptive name whenever you are declaring a variable it should have some descriptive name indicating its purpose like when we are using int, then the variable names like a, b, c, whatever. So, like when we are, uh, suppose we are going for a sum. We are write, um, writing a program to find a sum. So, what we write? Sum equals to 0. Or for multiplication, suppose mlt, ml is equals to something or anything. So, these kind of variables, what we write? Suppose for multiplication, multiply ml. Obviously, the person will uh, see that this, this is for multiplication or for sum, we use sum. So, why we are using this kind of variables? So that it is very easy to identify that this is the purpose of my particular variable. My purpose of variable is to find the sum. So, I am writing here sum. Right. So, int sum. That is, this is my variable. I am finding, uh, I am go going to find the sum of, a, of two numbers. Or, so this is what the identity, how we are going to identify. So, variable's name should be in such a way that it will show its purpose. It will be very easy for the person to identify that time. Try to write the variables for the purpose which is going to, which uh, a particular variable is going to hold. 
This is the first thing. Second thing, use of variables for multiple purpose usually makes future enhancements more difficult. If multiple purpose, I am using this sum for a particular purpose. Again, for any other purpose also, I am writing this in sum. Again, for any other, other purpose, I am using this sum. So, it will be very difficult for me to understand in future. So, I have to write in such, in such a way, I cannot use a single variable for multiple purposes. No. Same variable should be used, different, different variables should be used for different purposes. And try to write the name of those variables as per their purpose of, whatever purpose they are going to uh, do, okay, or solve. So, this is the third point or third guideline which is very important, okay. Since the identifier name or the variable names when we are declaring, it will obviously show the effect in your program. Your program will be easy if the variable names are declared nicely and correctly, right. Like global variables, local variables and your constant identifiers as we have seen in previous class also. How we have to write those formats. This is the thing you have to keep in mind by using those variables. Now, the code should be well documented. Okay. Means, whenever you are writing the course, it should be well documented. So that in future, if I am needing that particular, I need that code, what I have written, what I have used at that time, I can get the whole code in a documented way. So that it will be very easy for your maintenance as well as testing. In testing, if you are getting some error, you encountered some error. So if your code is nicely documented, you can get that one. Suppose you have changed, you have got an error, you have changed, um, uh, corrected that one, right? Maybe after correcting that error, maybe you are again getting some, encountering some other error. It can happen. It happens if you are getting some, encountering some other error for that one, that particular line. Then what was my previous line? I have already erased that one. So for this kind of thing, if you, if your uh, particular code is document ni documented nicely, then what will happen? You can easily deal with that one. Then you can have the document. You can see, yes, this and this was my code previously. And I have changed this thing. After that, I am encountering this error. So you can easily correct those things. You can easily have the corrected version of your code. So this thing should also be kept in mind. Your, whenever you are writing the code, it should be on a well documented format. You are writing the code, you are making the code, just have the document, documented version of your code, right? Which will be very useful in your future phase. That is your coding phase, uh, testing phase, which will be very useful also in the maintenance phase. It is very easy to uh, see the documents and correct the code. Or if any error is encountered, then for further error encountering, it is very easy to see. Now, last one is, uh, fifth one is, the length of any function should not exceed 10 source line. When the length of the function should not exceed 10 source line. When you are declaring a function, 10 code lines can be, source lines can be there. More than 10 source lines are not written. May, it should not be written. Okay, not written or it should not be written. Lengthy functions contains many other functions which are difficult to understand. They will have some different keywords. They will have some different functions. And obviously that will make your code more difficult to understand. So try to write your, maintain your particular function up to 10 source line. Which can be easily understand and understandable. Okay. Because if your particular function lines are much more lengthy, then some other functions are coming there. You are calling some other functions. You are going for some other uh, variables or variable names or other keywords. So it will make it more difficult to understand. So whenever you are going for a function, try to maintain it or try to limit it up to 10 source lines. And do not use go to statement. It is very important. Many programs, it is very bad to use go to statement whenever you are writing a code okay for uh, it is mainly it's maintained that not to use go to statements it makes your code maybe easy but go to statements are generally they are not taken as a it is not taken that you are a good coder when you are writing a go to statement you are using a go to statement so try to avoid go to statements in your particular codes okay so these are the 
basic guidelines which are followed while writing a coding. This should be followed so that as we have seen in the SDLC model, every particular code reflects some effect on the next phase. So for every particular phase what we have, we have done, we have in every particular phase we have just made it easy, written it in an easy form so that it will be easy for the next phase team to deal with that one. Again in coding phase also why we are using these standards and these guidelines so that any person who is dealing with this code in, the, in this phase or in the future phases it will be very easy for him or her to understand this course and to again go for the next course okay next phase okay so these are the basic guidelines previously we have seen the standards and guidelines now in next phase we will see about the code walkthrough and code uh, inspection these all things okay till then if you have any kind of queries or any suggestions please write to the my comment section if you like my channel please give a like and please uh, uh, subscribe my channel okay it will support me very nicely thank you until then take care and goodbye